The August inflation number caught a lot of people by surprise. The president seemed happy that the headline number was 0.1%, but that's just because gasoline prices have been falling. The Federal Reserve and most investors focus on the core number, which excludes food and energy, because these two tend to bounce around a bit. Yes, we all need to eat and drive, so ultimately headline inflation is what we care about, but the core number reflects the underlying trend. The core number was up six tenths of 1%, two times what people were expecting. Shelter was a big part of that. It was up seven tenths. Households spend more on shelter, whether by renting the home or by owning it, than on anything else. Shelter is 31% of the CPI number, but once you strip out food and energy, it's 40%. Some of that is based on actual rents, but 31%, almost a third of the core CPI, comes from something called owner's equivalent rent, or OER. Now, it's not well understood, but when the government looks at the cost of shelter, they don't measure house prices. This seems odd because around two thirds of American households choose to own their home. But a home is an asset while CPI is measuring the cost of a basket of goods and services. The economists at the Bureau of Labor Statistics or BLS who measure these things want to get at the value of the service that a home provides. Your home is an asset, but it provides you a service, which is shelter. The BLS wants to separate the two. So they survey homeowners and ask them what they think they could rent their home for. There is some logic to this, but the huge problem is that most of us don't think about what we could rent our home for. We generally know what home prices are doing, but I've never been at a barbecue where someone said my OER is moving up. It would be a pretty strange crowd if that happened. What this means is that a big chunk of the core CPI is based on a concept that almost nobody thinks about other than the economists at the BLS. It's why the Fed never sees housing inflation like the rest of us, because OER doesn't move with house prices. But now OER has started to tick up, and it turns out that OER and house prices are linked, but with a lag. When house prices start moving up, homeowners don't initially assume that the rent they could charge on their home is also going up. But after a while, they do. And it turns out that although OER doesn't reflect today's home prices that well, it does better with an 18-month lag. OER is like an echo. It's a delayed reaction. Home prices recently have slowed quite a bit, and some markets are soft. But because OER lags, it's probably going to keep rising for a while longer. This will put upward pressure on the core CPI for at least the next several months. Relying on homeowners to know what their home would rent for, which is the basis for owner's equivalent rent, has a lot wrong with it. Sometimes economists live in their own world. It's going to make the inflation figures harder to understand. If you're interested in learning more about the energy sector and interest rates, then don't forget to subscribe and follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Our handles are in the description box below. We manage investment products to profit from the outcomes I've discussed. To find out more about what we're thinking, sign up for our twice-weekly blog at sl-advisors.com. We always love to hear from you. So if you have any comments or blog ideas, please leave them down below. I'm Simon Lack. Thank you for watching this video.